these are images of the brain. We're actually starting about, I would say about midway uh, up the brain. And then it goes all the way uh, up to towards the top of the brain. And we, we can use, these are called slices. And um, these are what are referred to as axial slices. So it's basically as if you kind of pop, you know, made a slice through the, the from the front to back, pop the top of the head off. And now you're kind of looking down on the brain. And so, and hopefully you can see my pointer, but the, the top of each image is actually right behind your forehead and the bottom of the image is the back of the the brain so that's the way we look at it. and then you have left and right and so uh what you're looking at here these colors represent the the, the differences between the ohm group and the non-ohm group the control group and you're seeing some so all the for the most part these are all blue which in and of itself is interesting so um what we are what we found is that almost across the board in all the all the individuals who participated as well as in the males and the females that we tended to see overall decreases in some of these key areas and again what i think that ultimately is telling us is that it kind of it, it when the person was actually doing these practices we also saw decreases and so i think in some ways this kind of helps them already get to where they need to go uh, and hopefully, you know, try to do that. Tries to do that uh, quicker each time, each subsequent time the person does the practice. So some of the areas that are really interesting here, uh, if you look on the the sort of top row of slices, and I won't go into too much detail on all of these things, but you see a couple of blue areas towards the top of the of the scan. That's part of the frontal lobe. That's actually a, an area called the the cingulate gyrus which is very involved in concentration, focusing attention, regulating emotions. And when this area is decreased, part of what we tend to see is, uh, the, well, let me, let me say it this way. When the frontal lobe turns on, we are concentrating, we're focusing attention, we're kind of purposely doing things. When the frontal lobe quiets down, we begin to lose that sense of purposefulness and action. And it, it's a sense of flow, it's a sense of letting go, different words that people use. But um, that's what we tend to see when people are, um, uh, are actually you know, in the practice. But it looks like these um, these are long term effects that enable the frontal lobe to kind of maybe get there, uh, e you know, even a little bit quicker because you're already starting at a slightly lower level. One of the other areas of the brain, which I'll just point out here, uh, in the very first, the top le left slide uh, or uh, scan, is uh, this blue area along the two sides. Uh, this is a really important structure called the insula, and the insula is very involved. In, um, in in the ability to perceive emotions and to be able to kind of feel emo it's not just the feeling of the emotions but it's sort of how we think about them and what we do with them and so um the 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 fact that the insula is affected by this practice seems to suggest that there are long-term changes that alter the way that we perceive other people's emotions um, this is an area of the brain that seems to be involved in feelings of empathy and compassion for other people. So again, you know, really fascinating that we see these kinds of changes going on in areas of the brain that are involved in our sense of flow, uh, how we connect with people. And then if you look uh, probably in the middle row, there's a little area along the kind of towards the, the bottom of the scan. This is really towards the sort of the back top part. Uh, there's some blue areas here. Uh, this is the parietal lobe, and this is an area that is often associated with helping us to form our spatial representation of ourself. And it's an area that we have always been very interested in when it comes to meditation and prayer practices, that a person uh, has a decrease in these areas, which seems to be associated with a loss of the sense of self and a feeling of being more connected, more unified, if you will, with another person in the context of sexuality, with a group of people in terms of a, a, a group ritual or practice, or even with the universe or God. So again, you know, we see the, again, this is not during the practice, this is the resting state of the brain. So it's kind of changing the way the brain is kind of operating and, and in some senses looking at the world, arguably, that again, if we can take advantage of this and really show in future research that these changes are, you know, long-term and, and uh, obviously they seem to have some degree of permanence to them, 
uh, if we can correlate this with feelings of compassion, empathy, and so forth, then that, that can go a long way to helping us understand how this practice um, may be very uh, useful and beneficial, not just for individuals, but for the larger society as well. Um, so here are some scans. This next slide looks very similar, but the, some of the blues kind of changed. Um, these are the male subjects in our study. And as uh, many of the people who may be on the call know, um, obviously the practice can be done with both males and females. Um, the males who are going to be the strokers um, are going to have a, a, a different experience, but certain elements are going to have similarities to it as well as part of that whole process. And we see changes that are going on uh, in the insula. If you, again, if you look at this top left-hand corner here, uh, and then actually um, some of these areas that are along the bottom line uh, of the scan, this is also part of that cingulate cortex. Uh, we don't see the anterior part, the front part as much, uh, but we see some of the other areas which are also involved in that sort of, you know, how we sort of connect with another person um, and how we pay attention to that other person. So we see, you know, a little bit of a distinction between the males on these slides. And then here are some of the other areas that are affected in the females um, who were part of our study. So uh, again, insula always seems to be involved if you look at some of these areas along the top slides. Uh, but then some of the back areas of the brain, which are part of the parietal lobe, uh, these are areas which all seem to be a little bit different. Uh, but when you kind of put them all together, it helps us to understand how the two individuals as part of this paired practice may be interacting with each other, uh, might experience the practice a little bit differently, but also, you know, there's certainly a, a fair amount of overlap in terms of that sense of connectedness and, and the very powerful uh, kind of unifying experience that's part of the spiritual element uh, of this particular practice.